Hello, that's Sean Mano. So, yeah, just before Christmas, I did a video saying, ask me questions. I've done it two or three times before, and it's always really fun. So, I did promise I'd upload the answers nearer to Christmas, which I didn't. So, apologies for that. But you know how it is. Stuff gets in the way sometimes. But I did do a Happy New Year video for you all. Anyway, without further ado, I haven't really looked at many of these. I've just let the comments fly, and I'm just going to answer them and see what happens. So, so Russet Fox, how has your love for scents changed from the time you started to now? Drastically is the answer to that question, majorly. You think you like a particular type of fragrance and then you'll smell something that just sends you off in a different direction. That happens to me all the time, it happens to me on a monthly basis. It's, all I can say is it's just widened. The more you smell, the more you like, or the more you want to try, the more you realize what's out there it just goes like that it's it's just massive this is why i do this I, it's constantly surprising me it's never ending it's always a treat to smell something new and interesting and it's definitely changed i used to be in this box of um designer fragrances which isn't a bad thing at all and i have delved into, I do that, that's really bad, niche, niche fragrances aren't necessarily up from designer, um, but I have delved into the niche world and I'm finding that there are a lot more unusual compositions that don't appeal to the mass market, a little bit more individual, a little bit more interesting, so that it's changed drastically, like it, it really has. I'm finding myself wanting to wear something a, a lot more daring, things that are a little bit more, that create a bit more intrigue, or things that, are, that my nose just isn't used to. That's just, that's just what it is. Really cool question, thank you. So, um, Marianne Stoy, Marianne Stoika, did I pronounce that right? Stoisha? Uh, you started your perfume long ago, uh, made of essential oils. How about it? Did you arrive at a result which pleases you? Ah, just yesterday, or the day before, I, re I uploaded my most recent update, so go and check that out if you want. Um, am I still mixing oils? Which are your ups and downs when it comes to blending? Yes, I'm still mixing oils all the time. That's what I'm studying. I absolutely love it. The ups and downs. The ups are when something comes together, when you have an image in your head and you put something together and it works. That's really good because, you know, it's always a mystery. You put something in and you really never know what's going to happen unless you're hugely trained, which I, I'm not. That's what I'm learning to do. That's the ups, when you get a result. The downs are realising that you've made a mistake and have to really kind of counterbalance what you've done. The downs are when you feel like you've ruined a fragrance and you've spent six months on it, like which I have. Not ruined, but when you feel like something's a little bit unrectifiable, if that's even a word. It's, it's a bit tough to do that, I'm not going to lie. It's, those are the downs. The downs are my own self. I can't, I'm finding it hard to motivate myself and it gets me annoyed and I, it's only me to blame. So it's about um, self-motivation basically and it's, it's tough. It's a long process. It's not something you can just go drop, 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 drop and then you've got a perfume. It's very, very difficult. So the downs are, am I ever going to finish this? And also the mess. Some ingredients are very messy, <laughs> some ingredients do not want to be tamed, and some ingredients just really ruin everything they touch. But still, it's a minor. Um, Eric Myers. Uh, your all-time favourite junk food you can't live without? Oh, burgers. Oh, let me just take a moment for burgers. It's burgers. And I don't mean f like fast food burgers like McDonald's, I mean... Burgers I consider junk food, but in London over the last two or three years, burgers have become more of a, a way of life. There are all of these b restaurants that are dedicated just to burgers, but not fast food burgers. Nice, all different kinds of crazy ingredients with all different relishes and stuff. Burgers I cannot live without. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Pizza's another one, but if I had to choose burger or pizza, I'd choose... Perga, 
or pizza. No, it would definitely be burgers. I love them. Really good. I had one recently in a place called Meat Liquor and it's called the Dead Hippie Burger and it's like a double dipped bun with a special sauce that's a secret and I ate it in about three bites. I wanted another one. But they were £11, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, okay, next question. Da pra! Danny, right? Did I get that right? It's Danny, isn't it? Can I ask a question? What got you into fragrance? Um, it, my nose got me into fragrance. It's just a general curiosity about smelling the things around me and the environment I'm living in. I've always had a curious nature about me and I smell everything, not just perfumes, products. When I go to the supermarket, I'll walk down the, the laundry detergent aisle and I'll smell all of the, the conditioners and things like that. Shampoos, anything, the smell of my mum. That's just what got me into it. It was just kind of like a natural progression, I guess. So I hope that answers your question. Oh, you have another one. Okay, um, what do I do for a living? I work in advertising. And my, obviously my dream job is to be a perfumer or just selling perfumes in a, in a small capacity. But um, yeah, it's, I work in advertising. I do events and entertainment advertising. That's what I do. And what's my most, fra most fra favourite fragrance? Um, Samsara. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pin it on Samsara. I've said that before. I've said that many times before, actually. Um, thank you for a lo lovely, uplifting video. There, you're welcome. Okay, Kanisha Mabone, is that right? Kanisha Mabone? I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, Kanisha. Um, what would you recommend for a great perfume gift to myself for Christmas? Oh, I'm very late on that one. It's already gone. You can gift yourself for January, though, can't you? You can just go and get a January present. Um, that's really hard to answer, Kanisha, because I don't know too much about what your perfume tastes are. i tell you what. Respond to this video underneath, tell me what you currently wear already and what types of smells you like and it'll give me a better idea. Because I could just say anything, I could give you a recommendation of anything and it could be wrong. So give me a bit more information and I will try and help if I can. Um, okay, Mark Anderson again. Hi, I love your videos. My videos love you. What would, what would be your price limit if you totally loved a fragrance but was really expensive? It keeps moving all the time, you know, when the goalposts move, it keeps moving. I think, again, the more and more that I discover, and the more I smell unusual compositions and things that I've never smelled before, my price goal just keeps moving. If I smell something that blows me away, or if I smell it and I can't get it out of my head for a long time, and it's a really high price, I will start to consider actually buying it. And most recently I bought Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao, and that was the most expensive thing I've ever purchased, which was £173. But when something is really amazing quality and really unusual and you know it's going to last you years and years and years, I, I will move my goalposts. But so far that's the most expensive I think I've, I've bought. So, only two left. Um, Eric Myers, if you could have only one signature men's scent, what would it be? That's a tough one because my men's fragrances are very limited. I only ever buy a fragrance that's marketed for men if it's unusual or interesting or a bit different. And there's a few of them. If I had to pick, I would probably say Prada Amber um, by Prada. <laughs> That is a very clean, soapy kind of barbershop, forgery, lavender fragrance and that one I always have pleasure in wearing because it makes me feel very fresh and clean and I always go back to it. There's loads of others but that's the one that jumps to my head straight away. And I have a tweet, the only tweet I got as well, from David Long. You said, here's a question, um, what do you think are the top five most overrated scents? Okay, let's... Try not to offend loads of people. The first one is Aventus by Creed. What's going on with that? I smelled that when I went to a shop. I smelled it a few times now and I just really don't get it. I just don't get it at all. Having said that, when I wore it, I got two compliments instantly. So there's something in it that seems to draw people towards it. But I, I just don't get it at all. I really don't. Second one, Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf. 
Is it flowery? No. Is it a sugary bomb? Yes. It should have been called sugar bomb. It's just not very interesting. It's very one note, sugar, just, it's just very easy. It, there's nothing complex or interesting about it. it. It does its job though. It appeals to a mass market and it sells like hotcakes, but I think it's really, really overrated. I really do. Three, I'm going to struggle to think of one now. I really am. Without trying to offend the little monsters out there, Lady Gaga's first fragrance. I don't like it when a fragrance promises to be everything and then it really isn't just anything. It promised a lot of gimmicks and fun things and it just, it really didn't do it for me at all. And I can't really think of any more. I'm sorry David, but I can't. I gave you three though, so hopefully that's okay. Thanks for sending me a tweet. And then the last question from Brace Raid again. You're a Gemini, right? Yes, I am a Gemini. I was born in June, 18th of June. Um, pretty much smack bang in the middle of the year, which is, works out great because, you know, six months between presents. And yeah, I am. I'm a very typical Gemini as well. A chatterbox. Can you tell? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, flirtatious, weird, I don't know. Like to collect things and get obsessed about things and then just quickly move on from things. Yes, I am a Gemini. What star sign are you? Anyway. That's my video. Thank all of you for, thank you to all of you for sending in. Sending in? I'm not a friggin' Blue Peter presenter. So thanks everyone for sending me questions. It was really good fun. I only do it about once, maybe twice a year. So this is my one for 2016. I'll do it again in summer, I guess. Until next time, click my logo to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon for another review or more questions. Goodbye.